What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 182 of the Stand Up Guys podcast. I'm your host, the incomparable Zach Jones, joined as always by the Ninth Wonder, Chocolate Thunder, living in sin and pushing that shit in, the pussy juice sipping, just the tipping, passing out dick like bullets from John Wick, the phenomenal AJC. What's up, everybody? Now, AJ, before we get into what we've been watching this week, I'm I'm curious about a story I heard because Lester told me about like uh, that concert you went to. Yeah, and I don't know if you want to talk about that on the podcast or not, but it sounded like an interesting story. Yeah, no, it is an interesting story. Um, so like uh, the day before, I had like gone and run six miles. Um, I did some serious leg workouts. Like I did some leg lifts like 650 times. Uh, and, uh, you know, I did the full body workout that day too. And then I went for a hike that day too. Damn. So, yeah, I did a lot that day. And then that night there was a concert that I went to. And, um, so I, uh, I'm hanging out and my legs just, I, I couldn't use my, my thigh muscles, you know, like the hamstrings and everything. I just couldn't use them. And I was just standing with my legs like straight. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is a bad idea. I learned this as a kid. Like you don't do that. But um, it just I got I got a little nauseous, so I got nervous with that, and then um, I just like I felt kind of weird, and then before I knew it, I was on the floor and people were looking at me, and uh, like yeah, and they were like you know make they were really nice, they were all so helpful, really cool people, like really you know great people. Um, they had a medical person there too who took care of me, but like so it turns out I fell down. And they tried to help me get back up. And then I fell down again. And uh, so I was down there for a minute. And uh, I had like a little, almost like a daydream while I was down there. Like I was like almost talking and stuff like to myself. Like, uh, and then I just like in the middle of it while like kind of dreaming and dozing off, like I woke up and I'm just surrounded by people who are freaking, who are just like, you know, not freaking out, but they were like, you know, oh my God, what's, you know, what's going on this guy, you know? And everybody's like, just concerned and i was just like oh my that's never happened in my life it was first time ever and it had to have like at my first ever concert i'd never been to a concert before so it was one hell of an experience man that sucked but uh so you actually was- kind of like blacked out for a second it sounds yeah like. yeah <laughs> man that's the crazy just left my brain or whatever it was like i don't know and you were there on a date too weren't you yeah yeah she was super yeah. cool she was concerned you know yeah were you embarrassed though? Like when you woke up and realized what was going on? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I knew everybody thought I was on drugs. They must have thought. <laughs> like this yeah. guy's messed up. <laughs> for sure, yeah. What uh <laughs> what concert was it? Uh, it was like an Australian band. I don't know who they were, but they sounded American when they like everybody, like they sounded American when they sang, so I thought they were American at first. <laughs> and then they they like they were pretty cool they were chill you know they even stopped the concert when i like passed out <laughs> they waited oh, really? for me to, they waited for me to, like be okay <laughs> super cool uh but they were funny like they were making jokes throughout that before so uh yeah there were there were some chill people it wasn't like men at work was it <laughs> <laughs> no no not that <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like uh, I was sitting outside, you know, there were only 20 minutes left of the concert, you know, and um, like I hadn't eaten since like um, 1130 a.m. So uh, that was part of it. I uh, they gave me some snacks, some water. Uh, We called an Uber and got out of there. And that was pretty much it. You know, you said you learned as a kid, like you're not supposed to stand with like your legs like locked like that. Yeah, I gotta yeah. say that's one piece of wisdom like my mom never gave me, which is surprising because she always was like, you know, the the person that's like, oh, don't eat before you swim and a million things like that. I never heard the like, oh, if you stand with your legs locked, you might like pass out or whatever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Man, yeah, I just Lester told me that story and I'm like, what? That sounds crazy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> what a time for it to happen to my first concert with somebody. I was like, you know, like, yeah. So it was just weird. <clears throat> I was also I, I'm surprised to hear it was your your first concert because like I've never been to a concert, but I have a good excuse that I grew up in like a small town in Montana, and like, you know, we we didn't really even get 
live bands coming through. And, and if we did, it would have been some country band I wouldn't have been interested in. But you grew up in Houston. I would have thought for sure, like you had been to a concert or two in your day. I, I avoided such things just because like my perception of concerts was, was like it was hectic and chaotic and, you know, just right. so much going on. I'm not really I'm an introvert, you know, so I don't yeah. like those kinds of scenes. And um, I mean, you hear about what happens at concerts, Travis Scott concert, all that stuff. So it's like, you know, just it's not it doesn't seem like it's for me. But this was like a really chill one. Everybody was just kind of like swaying and, you know, just really chill. You know, like it was fine. That's cool. Yeah, I think like even now that like I'm in Portland and I have the option to go to concerts. Like, I think if I went to like a really loud rock show all the people would just annoy me like them singing along and stuff. Like, I don't know. I think that would just annoy me. Like the one concert I think I would maybe enjoy is like a, you know, Hans Zimmer in concert or something where you don't have to worry about that. And you're just like, yeah, sit down yeah. and listen to a bunch of kick-ass orchestra music. I, I think that I could enjoy, but yeah. um, well, this wasn't too loud or anything. It wasn't like that in that way. But I mean, that, that is a concern of mine too. I don't want it to be like blasted, you know, just, my eardrums and just everything about me just alert and nervous you know yeah when i see like concert footage with like just a you know large crowds of people and they're they're all singing at the top of their lungs along yeah i'm just like yeah i know myself i know that would annoy me so like it doesn't appeal to me but like yeah i mean i, I don't know how people love mosh pits that stuff is wild to me and you see it all the time on like twitter and stuff like where it goes haywire somebody's right. just throwing punches randomly like yeah i never understood how like that a mosh pit thing even like started like who was the first one to be like oh this seems like a good idea we'll get you know start bumping into each other really hard and like i don't know i don't know it just seems like the silliest thing somebody would like issues like anger problems it seems something. like it. yeah yeah <laughs> all of our mosh pitting uh, fans are yelling at us right now uh, yeah. um okay aj we'll get to a little tv talk uh you've been watching anything man um what i don't think i have been watching much no i've been i've been watching breakdowns of like uh love is blind and all those like reality shows oh jeez, they're so bad did you hear about that movie i think we talked about it. laquisha <laughs> yeah i kind of <laughs> a part of me wants to watch that movie and, and review it on yeah. the show just because i know it's <laughs> supposed to be bad i've watched different people break it down but i saw this one guy named 16 leo he broke it down for like two and a half hours he really went on that movie <laughs> <laughs> He's really good, though. He's funny. Yeah, he really you know, dissected it. I routinely listen to the How Did This Get Made podcast, and mm -hmm. I don't think they've ever done that movie, which surprises me because you'd think it would be yeah. like a prime candidate for them. For sure. Maybe they'll get to it, but yeah, that's something they should cover for sure. It just it seems like it was tailor made for 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 their podcast. Yeah. Uh, is now uh. What about the, I know you're big into basketball. Is the March Madness thing still going on? Is it over? So uh, March Madness is about to begin probably okay. next week, I think. Um, but now the conference tournaments are on. So Houston Cougars won the Big 12 regular season title by two games. So, you know, they came in for another conference that was much weaker and won the best conference in college basketball. Uh, they're playing the conference tournament now. They just got past the quarterfinals, so they're in the semifinals. And, uh, you know, they're the favorite to win the conference uh, tournament, too. And then it'll be NCAA tournament. And they're a number one seed. So they'll have a somewhat easier path to get to uh, the final four and then the championship game. So everything's looking up for us. Is this the best they've done in, like, a long time? I mean, they were they were really good last year, too. I mean, they, they've been great for the last five or six years. Oh, okay. Really good. Yeah. So, like, elite. But um, this is this is – I would say they surpassed expectations this year just because people thought they were going to have like some issues with entering, you know, this conference. Uh, but they ended up, uh, I think 29 and three right now. Um, so uh, yeah, they've had no setbacks at all. They've just been excellent. Okay. Yeah. Um, number one team in the country right now. Number one team in the country. How excited will, are like, do you keep yourself like intact or like if they actually went and won the whole thing, like how excited would you be? I don't, 
I think first I wouldn't believe it. Like it'd be surreal. <laughs> it would take time to understand, like to really digest it all. And then I would like savor it. You know, I would like, yeah, I would really enjoy yeah, that. Too. Um, so I watched, I've watched a handful of things. Um, so, um, on Hulu, that movie Poor Things was on there, which is like an Oscar nominated movie. Yeah. And so it, for anyone who hasn't watched it, basically the premise is like there's this Dr. Frankenstein type of guy who res- <clears throat> resurrects this dead girl uh, played by Emma Stone. And there's a little more to it than that, but I don't want to spoil it. But in the beginning of the movie, she's very childlike. And as the movie goes along, like, she gets like smarter and smarter and smarter. And the movie is kind of like, you know, about feminism ultimately. But, and, and, but my thing is, I don't know about you. I don't consider myself prudish, but whenever I see like a, uh, a movie, an adult, it has like a lot of like gratuitous nudity and, and, and sex in it. It kind of makes me just feel sorry for the actress no, apparently it, yeah. worked, it worked out for Emma Stone because she just won the Oscar for Best Actress. So, like, she probably, like, doesn't care. But, like, I don't know. There was just, like, she has, like, so many sex scenes in this movie. And, like, I would argue that almost all of them are gratuitous. It could just be, like, hinted at rather than explicitly shown, you know? So, like, I don't know. For, for me, the movie, and, and it's got some interesting, like, set design stuff, too. Um Ultimately, I think the movie is just okay. Like, uh, I can't give it like a real hearty recommendation, but like, it's 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 fine. It's fine. So, uh, like, she starts out as a kid. Basically, yes. When when she starts, she's got the brain basically of a toddler. It, uh, it's 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 very strange. It, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's almost. I don't want to give away too much, uh, and, and as to like why that is, but like, it's definitely a quirky movie. It's got some weird, kind of weird stuff in it. But um, yeah. Um, let's see. You watched Game of Thrones, right? Yes. So it kind of like feels like that Arya Stark sex scene, like she she has that scene oh, with Gendry right. towards, towards the end. And that that was like kind of weird to watch, you know, considering that we we seen her like grow up all those years. Like, Ag- yeah, agreed. Because it's like I'm sure when she did that scene, she was probably an adult. But since you watch the show from the time when she was just a kid, it feels very weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, so I finished that show, Death and Other Details, that I've been talking about. Mm-hmm. Um. It's like the murder mystery that takes place on a big, uh, like yacht or like cruise ship, basically. Right. Um, I gotta say, I was a little let down by the ending just because I think it got like a little bit unbelievable. Like it, <sighs> some of the things that happen, like it got to the point where I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know if I'm really buying this. It just it kind of takes some turns that I wasn't into, that I thought mm. went a little extreme. Like overall, it's still a fine show. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't let down by it, uh, the ending a little bit. Okay. Um. What else? Oh, this is a weird one. So I was also just like one day, like I didn't have anything to watch. And I was like kind of going around um, Hulu. And I noticed that the sound of music was on there. Oh, and, okay. And the sound of music is one of those movies that I know like when I was like very young in school, like they had us watch it. But I really didn't remember it at all. And it just seems like one of those movies that you're supposed to watch, you know? So yeah. it's like, and I know it's considered like a classic. So like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch The Sound of Music. And I did. And like, it's fine. Like, I maybe it's just because musicals, I don't know, aren't my biggest like genre. It's still like, I don't know, a little bit of a weird genre to me, but. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like, it's totally watchable. Like some of the songs are catchy, but like, uh, have you ever watched it? No, I've never seen it. (laughs) It's weird because like, I mean, the turn at the end. Oh, go ahead. I heard they're running from the Nazis. Exactly. Yeah. So like the, it centers around this Von Trapp family 
and, and like the lead guy is played by Christopher Plummer. But it, he it, it takes place in Austria, and he's like he's like a a general in the Austrian army, mm-hmm. and um, or maybe it's like the navy. I don't know, but he's like a top general or something. And basically, mm-hmm. the Nazis are starting to take over Germany. And in turn, they're going to, like, you know, take over Austria, and Austria is going to join the Nazis. And so, like, yeah, he decides, like, oh, I don't like the Nazis. I don't want to become a, a not, you know, a general in the Nazi army. So, yeah, at the end of the movie, they end up fleeing, which it, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird because up until then, the movie, you know, it's just like this kind of comedy about this, this, you know, woman trying to like, you know, teach these kids and connect with these kids, you know, but okay. um, <laughs> Mary Poppins is kind of, you know, I got to say though, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. I've never actually seen Mary Poppins. That's another musical that I'm like, I should probably I watch at some one. point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. Um, oh, and then I've also been watching, um, I believe this is on Paramount Plus. I've been watching Halo season two, mm-hmm. uh, based on the video game series, and uh, I'm I'm actually because I remember the first season I watched, and I'm like, some of the action scenes are pretty janky, but like, I enjoyed the story well enough. And and from what I understand, like fans of I've never played the Halo games, but from what I understand, like fans of the Halo games, like really hated season one because they're like, this doesn't re- yeah. really resemble Halo. And with Halo yeah. season two, uh, you know, I'm feeling the same way where like some of the action scenes are a little, uh, they, they just seem very obvious CG where it almost looks like you're watching a live action cartoon at points, you know, um, season two still. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, it's hit and miss. Like some of the action scenes aren't bad. Some of them look like that though. And are a little more janky. Uh, but overall, like I enjoyed the story enough, but I am curious to see how like the halo fans will react to this season. Like, will they like it more than season one? Or will they still hate it? Like, I don't, cause again, I don't know. I'm unfamiliar with the story. So I don't know if this season is any more in line with the games or not. Right. Yeah. I mean, I played the games, but I'm not too critical. I haven't seen the show, so I don't know much about it. But um, I watched Moist Critical, and he he was not too, you know, pleased with the first season. So I do want to hear his thoughts on the second one. <laughs> and then um, this isn't something that I watched, but I just saw a news article today. Well, right now, there's it's not like concretely um, stated by Disney. There's just like a lot of like speculation that um, they might be canceling plans for an Eternals 2 movie uh, for Marvel. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> I am too. Like, I didn't dislike Eternals like a lot of people did. Like, I think it's probably a better mm. movie than a lot of people think it is. But mm. my thing is, if they do cancel, which, again, I'm fine with, I do hope they at least kind of filter those characters into other movies. Like, I think it would be weird yeah. if we just never saw those characters again. They just retired forever. Yeah. Right, right, right. So hopefully they do something interesting with them. But, yeah, it doesn't really surprise me if they this is true and they cancel. But if they do, like, filter them in, they still have to explain, like, that Celestial showing up to Earth and taking one away. Like, that's a kind of a big plot hole, like, then if they don't cover that. That is true. That's a big, like, dangling thread, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know if they'll do this, but, you know, they are going to do the Fantastic Four movie. You've got to figure eventually that means they're going to work in Galactus, who I believe is, like, mm-hmm. another Celestial or whatever. So, like, I, yeah. I could see them finally tying up that, like, loose end okay. with, like, Galactus. I, I mean, who knows if they'll do that, but... It seems like a natural kind of fit uh, mm-hmm. to do that, you know. I can see that, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it for what I've been watching. Um, should we get to uh, some stories? Sure, let's do it. All right, guys, we're going to go around. Uh, we picked up some some hopefully entertaining stories off the interwebs, 
and we'll see what you guys think of them. AJ, I'll start with you. What do you got for us this week? A Nashville-based hardcore band named Lorena uh, Lorona announced that it had fired its lead singer after he allegedly dosed the band bassist with estrogen as part of a bizarre play to steal his fiance. Yeah, the I found this story news- too. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. The unusual news was shared by Lorona in a I'm probably saying that wrong. In a series of posts on the band's Instagram account, which uh, has since been suspended. Luckily, some of the fans were able to take screenshots of the revelations, which alleged that Lorona's lead singer, Diego, uh, had been lacing one of his bandmates' pre-workout supplements with high doses of estrogen in order to make him seem more feminine to his fiance. What a with weird plan Diego that was... is. Yeah, I no, mean, that is weird. I mean, like, okay, he's like pining. It's like a Jesse's girl situation where he's like pining after this dude's lady. And, like, yeah. of all the things he could think of to, like, try to steal her, he's like, I'm going to dose this guy with estrogen, I guess, to try to make him, like, more feminine so she'll fall out of love with him. I don't know. It's such a weird thing. I mean, you know, if you think about his options, he, like, it's better than, like, any violent thing or poison. Um, and it's 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 still subterfuge. Like, you're still, like, not showing your hand. <laughs> right. So, I mean, like... I guess from his approach, it was the sneakiest, most effective thing he could think of. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, though. But, yeah, no, I mean, he could have just slid into her DMs. <laughs> but I guess he didn't want to give himself away. You know, maybe he was too cowardly to talk to her. But, I mean, you know, honestly, if it's your friend who's got a girl, you're not, you shouldn't be making a move on her anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, okay, so... He was apparently obsessed with her. For the last five months, Diego has allegedly dosed Yorona uh, basis sticks with estrogen, which caused him to suffer s- serious physical changes from hormonal levels to some stomach ulcers, weight loss, and muscle fatigue, as well as a notable mental changes. Uh, we have decided to part ways with our vocalist, Diego, due to admission of very disturbing and concerning behavior towards one of our band members and their partner. Uh, Lorona announced on Instagram, uh, he has admitted to being obsessed with said partner and has been attempting to sabotage the relationship by cutting pre-workout with fr- he frequently gifts from his uh, job with high amounts of estrogen in them. He has been attempting to force a transition onto him onto him for the last five months in hopes that he would give that it would give the opportunity to swoop in once he looked stronger and more manly in comparison. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid caveman mindset that makes zero sense. Um, Lorona also revealed that Diego's thoughtless actions confused Sticks and forced him to spend thousands of dollars in medical bills to figure out what was happening to him. The bassist now wants to have the last batch of pre-workout from Diego tested for estrogen as evidence in in, the, in case he decides to press charges. He definitely should. Uh, apparently, Diego was the one who confessed his diabolical plan in a series of texts while intoxicated. Many of the details have been left out due to the disturbing nature and, the pro- and to protect the privacy of those involved. However, he had allegedly admitted to being obsessed with Stick's fiance and to dosing his bandmate with estrogen. We would not know any of this useless, any of this unless Diego hadn't gotten way too intoxicated and outed himself and then stayed in admission to all of the, this via text. The band wrote on Instagram. There are many more disgusting details that have been left out for the sake of privacy and general censorship. Diego allegedly tried to pass his confession off as an alcohol-fueled joke, adding that the workout supplements he shared with Sticks were always sealed. No one is buying his explanations. However, the basis claims that apart from the protein, all the supplements were unsealed. Uh, the only sealed products he would provide were proteins, but the other products were always unsealed because they were tossed at his job in, if they couldn't sell it, hence why it was free, uh, Six wrote. He also has easy access to steroids and hormones because of his gym practices. For now, Lorona's uh, lead singer has been outed or ousted from the hardcore band, but something tells us he will have a lot more to worry about if Stick's pre-workout sample comes back positive for estrogen. Wait, how does so, his I mean, how does his hmm. gym practices give him easy access to estrogen? I don't know. Like, I don't know what his gym practice. Like, I guess he works for a company. Like, he has a job where like he gets access to that stuff. Like, he gets protein and stuff like that. So maybe somehow he's got access. I don't know what the deal is. But also, like, okay, so he makes this guy look feminine. Is she really gonna go after you? Like, out of all the people in the world. 
where are you in line on this situation? Like she, she could probably go after somebody, you know, more mentally stable for sure. Like this is, how is he the next option? He doesn't know that. And the other thing is like, he must not have cared about this guy at all because it's one thing if he's like, okay, I'll do this. This guy will look less manly. I'll swoop in. But then like this guy, you know, ends up having all these other complications like stomach yeah. ulcers, all this like terrible stuff wrong with him. And this guy just like keeps doing it. And, and the only reason he got caught, like they said, was because he got so drunk, he ended up confessing it in text. Exactly. So it's like, this guy's, this guy's got some mental issues, man. Yeah, for sure. No, this guy is something else. Like, uh, sociopath comes to mind. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's very <laughs> peculiar behavior. <laughs> it's just such a bizarre, like, thing to even think about. It, it's one thing to be like, oh, I, like, I'm crushing on my friend's girl. And, like, I'm going to do something about it. But the fact that, like, that's the thing that comes to mind for right. him. like that's his diabolical plan. that's so weird like it i don't know weird. imagine if it would have worked though <laughs> i mean i don't think it would have though this guy seems too crazy for any girl to like him anyway <laughs> yeah you can tell like this, sane girl this yeah. guy's gotta have like deep-rooted mental problems yeah for sure he would out himself at some point when he got drunk like you'd see who he really is anyway it sounds like it yeah yeah. Um, okay, I got a story here that I uh, headline looked interesting. Um, a woman faked seventeen pregnancies to co- to collect maternity benefits. I heard about this. And yeah, skip yeah. work. And mm-hmm. it's an Italian woman stands accused of faking no less than seventeen pregnancies, twelve natural abortions, and five false births over the last twenty four years to re- to receive a hundred. 10,000 euros, $120,000 in maternity benefits. 50 year old Barbara Lowell has had an unusual number of pregnancies over the last 24 years, which has resulted in years of maternity leave and a small fortune in state paid benefits. According to the documents uh, filed by the woman, she went through 17 pregnancies, 12 of which unfortunately couldn't be carried to term. The other five allegedly resulted in the birth of healthy babies named Benedetta, Angelica, Abramo, Letizia, and Ismail. Only there is no record of them ever being registered, and no one has ever actually seen them. Barbara allegedly birthed her youngest child in December of last year, but now authorities claim she has been under surveillance throughout her late pregnancy, and they have proof that she was never pregnant. Um... Um, they are also accusing her of having faked all 17 declared pregnancies to receive over 110,000 euros in benefits and get time off work. Um, hers is a story so unbelievable that most filmmakers would consider it over the top. Prosecutors claim that her elaborate fraud over the last two decades involved stolen birth certificates from uh, Rome clinics and other forged documents and doctor signatures pillows to emulate a baby bump and a rehearsed walk to appear pregnant. To declare all her pregnancies, Barbara Lowell registered the stolen medical certificates with forged signatures and was able to receive around $120,000 in maternity benefits, as well as years of maternity leave from various employers. Incredibly, no one suspected anything considering she had reportedly been doing this since the year 2000. But her luck ended last year when labor police started monitoring her latest pregnancy following her around and gathering evidence that she wasn't actually pregnant. This kickstarted the investigation into her previous pregnancies. I knew full well that my partner was not pregnant, David uh, Pizzanato, Barbara's 55-year-old partner, confessed during interrogation, claiming that he had been aware of her fraud since 2012 when the relationship began. He stands accused as an accomplice, but is apparently more than willing to testify against Lowell in exchange for a lighter sentence. As for Lowell, despite the overwhelming evidence against her, the inexistence of her five children, the forged paperwork, the partner's testimony, surveillance, etc., she remains defiant. To avoid having to appear to investigators for interrogation, the 50-year-old woman produced two medi- medical certificates, genuine, uh, genuine this time around, attesting to her poor medical condition. Uh, still, she faces prison time for financial fraud and identity fraud, among other charges. My thing is, is like, 
first of all, um, where is this? Spain, I think. They must, or no, Italy. Um, Italy, yeah. They must give out like some really good benefits, uh, maternity benefits. Um, I believe it. I mean, I think a lot of Europe has like kind of a socialized system. And they're more like, you know, there's like more of a social net, like when it comes to that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, it makes sense. And there's going to be people who take advantage of it. But um, very bold, 17 times. But like, now, uh, how did the fake yeah. abortions like get her benefits? Are, are, does she get benefits just from like being pregnant at all? And then like, I think that's what it was. Okay. And then later on, she's like, oh, that one was aborted for whatever reason. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, she just didn't learn. Like, she just didn't stop. That's the thing. Like, okay, you're ahead. Now quit, you know? It kind of reminds me of this uh, story of this postal worker who kept uh, stealing money in the postal service. He got to, like, I think a, a few million dollars. And, uh, you know, at that point, people notice. Right. And uh, he tried to run away, and he went to his own local airport to get out of the country. And obviously, they were waiting for him there. I don't know if he would have gotten caught at any other airport. I'm sure he would have been on a no-fly list anyway. But, I mean, um, you know, quit while you're ahead. You know, you get 500000 chill with that. You know, like, yeah. You know, I don't know how stringent abortion laws are in Italy. It is, like, very Catholic, so they might be somewhat stringent. Mm. But, like, if they, like, if they weren't and, like, somebody didn't care about getting abortions, they could literally, like, just keep legit getting pregnant and getting abortions and like, I don't, you know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah, and rack true. up a bunch of money. So like, I don't know. It seems like this is a system like uh, people could take advantage of. I do think that every time you have an abortion though, it hurts your chances at having a healthy child later on. Oh, that's probably I true. Think that's the thing. Yeah. But I mean, uh, this, somebody like this woman, like probably wouldn't even yeah, care about that. Yeah. Um, but it, it sounds like, like, as far as, like, the stolen and forged, like, certificates with the other, like, I don't know if she did that all by herself or if she actually got, like, a, like doctors like to a sign medical off. Professor. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like she might have got, like, a little bit of collusion. It must there. be a crooked doctor, yeah. But, man, yeah, $120,000. Uh, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good scam. Yeah, she made like seven to eight thousand per uh, baby. Yeah, um, I'll nice. send it back to you, man. Well, speaking of uh, fraud, man allegedly pays someone to cut off his legs for insurance fraud. Yeah, a Missouri man allegedly tried to commit insurance fraud by paying someone to cut off his both of his legs and stage a tractor accident to cover it up. The Howell County Sheriff o Sheriff's Office recently investigated the most bizarre case in its history. In November of last year, a 60-year-old man from Willow Springs lost both his legs after allegedly suffering a brash hog accident. A uh, brush hog accident. Uh, the brush hog is a rotary mower uh, usually attached to tractors, and the man claimed to have both legs accidentally cut off by one. Uh, however, there are a few holes in the man's story. First of all, he had literally lost his legs as in they were nowhere to be found, which was bizarre for this type of accident. Then there was the fact that the man's wounds were too clean to have been caused by a brush hog. Uh, and finally, the man was in a known paraplegic, which raised questions about how he managed to find his way in the way of a tractor-operated brush hog. If it was done by a brush hog, it would have been a bloody, gory mess, Tory Thompson, a lieutenant with the Howell County Sheriff's Office, told uh, the Springfield newsreader. I've seen those types of accidents before. That wasn't like that. Um, officers and medical per personnel called to the scene of the accident were very curious about the tourniquets on the stumps of his legs and who had put them on immediately after the accident. Uh, after the investigation continued and more holes appeared in the injured man's story, police discovered that a Florida man had visited the victim with a hatchet and allegedly chopped his legs off for free. No, for a <laughs> fee. Uh, for free. Uh, it was later revealed that the 60-year-old paraplegic had devised a plan to commit insurance fraud, and since he didn't really have any use for his legs anymore, he decided to have them both chopped off in a staged accident. But since the man hadn't yet filed a claim with the insurance company, there was no reason to charge him. 
It was a poorly executed plan. I've never seen anything quite like it, Thompson said. Even though the paraplegic man could not be officially charged with insurance fraud, the sheriff's office was so annoyed with the waste of time and resources that it considered pressing charges or filing a false police EMS report. The problem was that the man's injuries were so severe that incarceration was virtually impossible, so they decided to let him recover in a hospital instead. Uh, as for the man's lost legs, a relative of his reportedly found them in a bucket concealed by tires and turned them over to investigators. <laughs> I mean, he was already, like, you know, paraplegic, so I guess, like, it just made sense for him to, like, just let them go. Yeah, he's like, I'm not using these things anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't know how, <laughs> yeah. How is that insurance, like, is the insurance going to be like, oh, well, what's the point of us paying out if you couldn't use them in the first place? I, <laughs> yeah, right? I do wonder about that. Like, would the um, <laughs> in, insurance company had a problem with that anyway? <laughs> He's like, I'm going to be a leg model. <laughs> <laughs> with my dead legs. Yeah. He's actually lighter now. He can do more probably. <laughs> You know, he probably still wouldn't have got away with it because he would have had, like, to have the, um, um, like, tourniquet around his leg to survive. But he really, yeah. he could have just stuck his legs in the machinery. Like, <laughs> yeah, just go for it. <laughs> like, <laughs> made it look realistic, like, you know. But then, he could have had, like, shorter <laughs> stumps, but that's fine, you know, or longer stumps. That would have been fine, yeah. But then it's like he would have, I guess, so this guy, I, I guess, was, like, paralyzed from the waist down. So he would have still yeah, had to so He would have still yeah. had to like you know prove that he can like use use his arms, climb up on the machine, use the machine yeah. with just his arms. I guess um, that was so, de definitely one of their questions. Like, how'd you even get out there? Yeah. Right, right, right. But I mean, hey, a for effort, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's good a, try, buddy. a pretty extreme. <laughs> if he could have abortions, he would have gone with the Italian ladies' plan. But you know. <laughs> also like what kind of guy do you have to be that like uh you know somebody can call you up and be like hey um i'll, I'll pay you some money if you come and cut off my legs and you're like florida okay man. sounds like a job you have to be a florida man for that <laughs> <laughs> like, you reached out to a random floridian who was like hey you want to cut off my legs like, yeah sure okay i'll be there yeah like i want to i want to meet that guy i want to see what that guy is all about they didn't talk about pressing charge against that guy. I guess, like, you could just cut off anybody's legs if they ask you to. <laughs> That's true. Is it a crime if somebody pays you to dismember them? Right, yeah. It's... I think I heard about, like, a German guy who, like, ate people. Like, like they, they would agree to it or something. I don't know. Maybe it's a movie or something. But I feel like I've heard of that. Oh, I think you're right. I think I vaguely remember a story like that. Yeah, where, like, yeah, I think a guy was, like, paying people to be able to, like, I don't know, like, cut things. I don't know if they were cutting things off of him or them, but, yeah, you're right. There was, I vaguely remember. It might have even been on the podcast. There was a weird story about that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, speaking of uh, weird stories, let's test this one. Um, Russian tattoo artist detained for hurting the feelings of Christians with her tattoos. <laughs> Those poor, poor Christians are so impressed. <laughs> A young tattoo artist from St. Petersburg, Russia, was recently detained for insulting religious believers with controversial tattoos featuring Jesus Christ, uh, the cross, and other Christian symbols. Daria uh, Krich Krichker is facing up to one year in jail for her crimes. According to the Orthodox activist group that filed a complaint against her, she has committed uh, repeated gross blasphemous acts against Christ, <laughs> the Mother of God, and the saints of the church, which cannot be tolerated on Russian soil. It all started earlier this month when photos of a tattoo reported, uh, reportedly inked on uh, Kritschker's own calf went viral on social media. It showed Jesus on the cross having an orgasm which isn't the kind of creative work that religious people would appreciate. Uh, it's weird. Many would describe it as disgusting, but in Russia, such a tattoo can uh, literally land you behind bars. In Kritschker's case, the above-mentioned tattoo was only the beginning. Once the hounds were unleashed, they started sniffing around for other controversial tattoos, and they made sure they found them. 
Soon, dozens of national news publications were featuring pictures of kittens peeking out of crosses, uh, churches with inverted reflections, and anime-style girls sitting on Jesus' lap, all designed to create the image of a a troublemaker. Uh, Before long, the authorities became involved. The young tattoo artist was detained at the airport just as she was getting ready to fly to uh, Yerevan in Armenia. A criminal case was opened against her under Article 148 of the Criminal Code of the Russian Federation, a violation of the right to freedom of conscience and religion. And she risks up to one year in jail. Considering she has a clean record, she will likely get away with a large fine. Dario told interrogators from the Center for Combating Extremism that it had never been her intention to offend Christians, but that excuse is unlikely to get her off the hook. Oh, and those controversial tattoos the religious activists found, apart from the one uh, of Jesus on the cross with a big smile on his face, they were actually the work of another tattoo artist, who happens to be the owner of the tattoo shop Dario works at. No criminal case has been opened in her name yet. Uh, There should be no images of cats, dogs, horses, monkeys, or any other inclusions or other details that profane holy religious symbols since this is a disrespect for sacred things and blasphemy. The Orthodox activist group 4040 wrote in a statement, This tattoo artist consistently and systematically made tattoos with caricatures of icons and with inverted temples and with blasphemous inscriptions mentioning God and hanging crosses on the waist and other things. We are talking about deliberate, thoughtful actions. Um, If kittens insult your faith, then I have serious serious uh doubt about its strength the tattoo artist said i mean um i didn't get the animal part how is that offensive i know i i can kind of get these people like (laughs) getting uptight about like the anime girl sitting on jesus's lap and stuff but like literally like one of these tattoos is just like a cross and it has a bunch of kittens in it like you know peeking out out of the cross i'm like most people like even christians would find kittens adorable and right. I wouldn't think would be like so offended That'd by be that. Like a positive image for most people. Yeah, you would think so, but yeah. uh, apparently in Russia uh, they're a little more even uptight than it sounds like than our Christians, which is saying something. Right, and you know, I don't know if this is just propaganda in the U.S., but from what I understand, the Soviet Union was like not religious. They they kind of got rid of religion, didn't they? Like they were anti-religion. Um. I don't know. I, I I had heard before that there was like a strong Christian like community in in Russia, but I didn't really know the extent of it. But this makes okay. it sound like uh, Russia. I don't know about the other countries surrounding Russia, but it sounds like Russia in particular is like, yeah, very Christian, Orthodox Christian. Yeah, yeah. dude. Jesus, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I'll throw it back to you. All right. Let's see what we got here. Okay, I got a couple of stories. Which one do I like more? Let's go with this one. Woman allegedly tries to kill husband over postcard from woman he dated 60 years ago. A 71-year-old Florida woman is accused of assaulting and trying to kill her husband of 52 years over a postcard he received from a woman in Turkey that he had dated six decades ago. They say we get wiser and more understanding as we get older, but apparently jealousy never gets old. 71-year-old Bertha Yalter of North Miami Beach is facing charges of attempted murder and aggravated battery of a person 65 and older after allegedly attacking her husband in a feat of rage. According to the arrest report, Yalter tried to smother her elderly husband with a pillow after learning that he had received a postcard from a woman in Turkey from who he had dated uh, 60 years ago. The woman, or the, the attack occurred at the couple's com- condominium in the eastern shores of Eastern Shores area of North Miami Beach and left the visibly frail man with bruises and open lacerations on both of his arms and stomach area, as well as bleeding bite marks. Uh, According to some sources, Bertha got upset after her husband admitted to replying to to this old flings postcard, Uh, but that doesn't justify her violent reaction. The woman's lawyer told reporters that the elderly couple got in an argument, the repercussions of which were regrettable, but added that there was no need to charge her with attempted murder. On the other hand, a state attorney explained that attempted pillow smothering was indeed attempted murder because that would suffocate and kill him. I think she also admitted to urinating on him, the state's attorney attorney said. 
So I think if you look at the totality of the circumstances, this appears to be more of a domestic battery that, by strangulation. Uh, Bertha Yalter's husband is currently recovering from her jealousy-fueled attack and is actually trying to get her out of jail, despite his original statement. He now denied being smothered with a pillow and claims he is fine. Police say there is a cell phone video of the incident which will be used as evidence to clarify what really happened. It's unclear whether Bertha is still in jail, but even when she gets released, she must stay away from her extremely fragile husband per court order. <laughs> I mean, 60 years. Some people can hold a grudge, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I kind of understand the, the hurt because you were together, you know, like you were married. And even if it was like a long time ago, it's part of your entire relationship. It's part of your story. So that kind of sucks. But I mean, the same time, I mean, like, that's such a long time ago. It's 60 years. I don't know. You know what? This actually reminds me of a story that I think Lester did on the podcast like ages ago where there was this mm -hmm. old married couple. I think they were like in their like late 80s or early 90s or something. They had been married like, you know, I don't oh, know, like yeah, 70 years so. or something. Anyway, the yeah. guy discovered a love letter um, that was sent to his wife like – in like the early years of their marriage that showed that like she had an affair, like, you know, way back when, like in the early years of their marriage and like he divorced her, like he filed for divorce and they had been married for like, you know, forever, like decades and decades and decades. I mean, I get that, you know, I kind of get that because like, you know, like it does feel like everything was built on a lie. Yeah. But divorce is the way to go. Like right. trying to kill somebody. Right, right. That is that is wild. Like, yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, divorce is a little more reasonable. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but uh yeah, man. Bertha. Uh, uh let's see, let's see what else we got here. Okay, yeah. This is a story of why and just yet another reason I would never want to be a landlord. Mm. Uh, man tries to hide stolen horse in his third floor apartment. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah. <laughs> a 19 year old man faces three months to five years in prison for stealing a horse and trying to hide it in his apartment on the third floor of a residential building. When police officers in Wojerawo, Poland, uh, received an emergency call about a man trying to lead a horse to the upper floors of a, a local ah, apartment okay. building. I was wondering if they couldn't, like, catch him going up there. Like, okay, so they saw him going, okay. Uh, they thought it was a clever prank. However, the person on the other end of the line was not laughing. They insisted that there was a grown horse on the staircase of the building making its way up, and the residents needed police assistance. Police reluctantly sent out a crew to investigate, but they were shocked to find that the caller's story checked out. There was indeed a full-grown horse being led up to, to the upper floors of the apartment building by a young man who appeared to be arguing with disgruntled neighbors trying to stop him. Mm. Um, a young man was trying to lead a mare into the stairway of a multifamily building. Um, Aneta Potrykis, a spokeswoman from the district police headquarters in, geez, Wajerowo, God, that's a crazy name, told mm. uh, the radio station. Uh, officers later learned that the unnamed resident trying to lead the horse into the third floor apartment had stolen the animal and was trying to conceal it in case someone came asking about it. He apparently never considered how conspicuous the operation would be or how he would keep a full-grown mare in his two-bedroom apartment if he managed to get it through the front door. I mean, just the hygiene alone, you know? Like, I know. Ugh. Can you imagine if he got it in there and there's just like a bunch of horse crap in his yeah. apartment? Like, what was this guy thinking? I mean, I know he's only 19 and he's probably not smart, but... Jeez, I mean, holy. <laughs> I mean, I can't even imagine. And, and the other thing is, you would think by the, like, the first time one of his neighbors, like, caught him trying to do that, he would be just like, oh, yeah, my mistake. <laughs> and he would, like, turn to right, him. Yeah, like, by oh, the fact yeah. that he's, like, doubling down, he's like, no, already made it up one set of stairs. We're keep, we're going to keep going. Um, yeah. Good Lord. I mean. Also, like, I know it's Poland, but. What are you going to do with a horse? Like, are, are you going to sell it? Like, what's what's the point of the horse? Like, I don't... I, I'm guessing that's what his plan was, was he stole it and, and was going to sell it. Um, unless maybe he was just... Uh... Oh, actually, I think there's a little more. Okay. 
Police officers estimate the price of the horse at around 15,000 Polish zloty, or about 3,800 U.S. dollars. Oh, come on. That's not even worth it. <laughs> they managed to get the animal back to the owner who had, had already reported it stolen, safe and sound. As for the 19-year-old genius who tried to hide the stolen horse in his apartment, he has been charged with theft and is spending up to five years behind bars. Five years for $3,800? That is That does sound pretty steep. Yeah. I mean, unless maybe he yeah. wasn't going to sell it. Maybe he was just like, oh, I got horse meat for a year. <laughs> oh, can yeah. Eat, I can eat true. for a year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. There are cases where in the U.S. a lot of people have been stealing, uh, I think, French, French, like, I don't know, bulldogs or something. I'm not sure what they were, but they're stealing those because they're worth, like, thousands of dollars. But they just, they go out, like, somebody's walking their dog, they just go out there and snatch them up. Like, you know, they'll hold a gun to you. They'll take the dog. But um, that's still more manageable, too. Like, it's a dog. Like, you can fit that in your place pretty easily. Like, a horse is next level, so... Yeah, that's that's something else, man. Like, I don't know what his plan was from A to Z. Like, what he was thinking. I don't think he thought this through at all. Like, very, very, uh, yeah, no, no plan there. Yeah, actually, your story about the dogs reminded me. We did a story again, like a long time ago, where like Lady Gaga's dog walker, I believe, was like yeah. shot by somebody, and they stole the dog. Luckily, that person survived, and they I think they got the dog back. But, yeah, similar thing. Like, they were like, oh, it's a valuable dog. We're going to steal it. Yeah, that's true. That's crazy. Actually, I mean, does anyone who, like, steal a person's dog, like, I'm okay with that person, like, getting put away for a long, yeah. long time. Yeah, I mean, to a lot of people – to, to most people, a dog is a part of the family. You know? Yeah, like, 100%. Yeah, it's a big deal. Um, AJ, I'll send it back to you. All right, let's see what we got here. Right, this is my last story, but eh, it's all right. Um, a Hong Kong finance worker at a multinational company was tricked into transferring $25 million to scammers after attending a video conference with deep fake C CFO and several colleagues. Hong Kong, Hong Kong police recently reported that it is investigating an elaborate scam that saw a group of bad actors defraud a multinational firm of 200 million Hong Kong dollars, uh, which is 25.6 million you, uh, using deep fake mm -hmm. technology to impersonate uh, company management during a, uh, video call uh, fraudsters initially targeted one of the unnamed company's finance workers with an email from the company's uk based chief financial officer uh, seeing that the message involved a secret transaction to the tune of 200 million hong kong dollars the man suspected it was a phishing email but those doubts were put to rest when he was invited to a video conference with the cfo and several other colleagues he recognized what the man didn't know was that all the familiar faces and voices in the video a video call were actually deep fake filters designed to make total strangers look and sound like company staff relieved that he was acting at the request of his cfo the finance worker transferred over 25.6 million into the scammer's account and went about his business they used deep fake technology to imitate and voice the the voice of their targets uh, re, uh reading from a script Senior Superintendent Baron Chan Shun Ching said, adding that his department was highlighting this case because it was the first one in Hong Kong where the victim was tricked during a multi-person video conference. The tricked employees said the company employees in the call looked and sounded like real people, but that in hindsight, the people he was on the call with uh, mainly gave him instructions before ending the conference abruptly uh, and didn't really interact with him. The scam was only discovered when the employees checked with the head office about the transaction, only to learn that no one knew anything about it. Deep fake and voice cloning scams have become a frequent, very frequent in the last few years as the technology has reached a level where most people cannot discern between real people and digital clones. We're here, man. It's gotten to that point. Yeah, scams are going to get really out of hand in the next couple of years because, yeah, already like... I don't know about like the visual like deep fake technology. Apparently, it must be getting better. But like the the vo just voice AI of like replicating someone's voice, like it can do it like perfectly. To you know, where if you just got a phone call of like somebody you know 
pretending to be somebody you know they could totally do that you know it's it's pretty yeah. crazy <sighs> yeah you know yeah I, I get messages all the time that are just random people trying to like start a conversation you know they'll they'll get the name wrong they'll be like hey johnny you know are <laughs> right. you so interested in whatever and you know i always ignore them but it's like they're they're really there's a lot of them out there they're trying to contact you in every which way like emails they pretend to be ups they they there's so many things you know like it's insane and you know what there's a lot of indian scammers you know i'm indian mm -hmm. and they targeted indian people before they started reaching out to other people like they've been targeting other indian people for the last 20 30 years like you'll get random phone calls from somebody who's like hey i know you blah blah you're this person's like they've been doing it so they they just started like messing up with everybody else now too so i mean i i think it's it's not just you know one country though i mean you hear about nigeria you hear about you know eastern europe like once all these people get their hands on this technology nobody's safe yeah, like, because it, it's one thing to, like, trick, like, an elderly person with an obvious scam or w something that would be obvious to a younger person. But now yeah. with this type of technology, like, you know, I could totally see even younger people getting tricked. I mean, you're you're talking to someone who sounds exactly like who that you think they are. Um, and they ask you to like, oh, I'm in, I'm in trouble. Can you like wire me some money through Venmo or something? You know, uh, I could totally see this happening a lot. Oh, that happens a lot, man. Like, yeah, like for sure. Social media is like they love that's their playground, you know, and like also dating sites. Like there's so many scammers on dating sites is insane. Like, obviously, you can kind of t read them from a mile away, you know, because they're pretty obvious. But I mean, there's there's. You hear about these people who get scammed by them, you know, like these catfishing schemes where they think like they're talking to a celebrity who somehow needs money or something. Like it's just there are vulnerable people out there who do get tricked. Yeah, actually, you know, I've been on OkCupid for a while and um, I'll notice like a lot of accounts <clears throat> when you're just swiping through. It'll be like, you know, someone who obviously looks, looks like a model and then. Yeah, every you'll, time you'll, you'll click on their profile, and number one, their picture isn't verified, which is something mm -hmm. you can do on on there. And number yeah. two is like you know their profile will be very like sparse with information, and you're just like, yeah, I totally recognize this as a scam, man. I gotta yeah. tell you, I, I'm so de <laughs> depressed because like the other day, like like I've just been using the free version of OK Cupid, you know, and mm -hmm. um. But I noticed it, it said I had like over a hundred likes. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm finally going to break down and actually pay uh, for oh, the service. Okay, Cube is the worst with that. They're all international. They're all fake. They're all That's scandalous. exactly what that. it was. I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. 90, probably 98% of it were like women from like Kenya and the Philippines yeah. who were either, yeah. either scammers or like people like just like trying to escape the third world. Either way, right. you know, obviously I'm not interested. And, yeah. and like anyone left over was just like horrible, you know. I'm just like, man, what a what a waste. Yeah, I uh, I had a membership with them for like one month, and uh, I let it expire. And because um, I started talking to somebody, and uh, you won't believe, I think I got like maybe forty something likes, like in the next week or so. And I, I knew it was a scam, like because I, when I first signed up, I was like, you know okay, I got some likes here. You know, I was on there for like a little bit of free time. And like, I got the same thing as you. Like when I signed up, I was like, oh my gosh, these are all international. This is all just, yeah, it's random. Yeah. Okay, Cube is the worst. Um, it's crazy. Like on, on Plenty of Fish, I, uh, as soon as I meet somebody that I like and I delete the app, like you start getting a ton of likes. Like they, it's almost like they start pushing your profile. <laughs> I could see them doing something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, that was, it was pretty wild. I was like, oh, like, cause like, I'm not even kidding. Like the vast majority of them. Yeah. were exactly like you said, international Kenya, mostly Kenya and Philippines. Yeah. You know, plenty of fish is weird, man. They got the, they got the oddest people on that site. Like, 
it's the lowest of the low <laughs> <laughs> but it's a mixed bag because sometimes there's a decent person once in a blue moon but like it's it's wild yeah it's, it's like tinder tinder's also got like the yeah it's got some weird people on there too man you know i've seen s- certain like you would think most women on average would put more care into their profile than the average guy but mm-hmm. i see some like profiles with women where i'm like are you actively trying to repel men these are terrible right. like the pictures you're choosing are awful some of the things in your profile are awful. I'm like, mm-hmm. I can't even imagine the type of profiles of of men that women see. Because like, if if the women are putting out profiles like the ones I'm seeing, I can't even imagine yeah. the trash men put on those sites, man. From what I understand, every woman is getting bombarded with dick pics. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they have to be right. What? Oh God, they make us look so bad, dude. Like, there's so many shitty guys up <laughs> have some game dude come on like talk it up have a personality like just don't throw your dick big at somebody like you think a woman's gonna see a dick and be like yes that's the one <laughs> i'm sure there's a few that that have worked on but I, the vast majority no I mean, you... they can get dick whatever they want yeah they, i know they're not looking for that like, that's the thing for yeah. them seeing a dick it's no big deal they're like uh, yeah they can get it anytime they want yeah. Can you imagine if women were as disgusting as men, just like always throwing you vag pics? <laughs> I think we all would have died of AIDS at some point. <laughs> probably. probably. <laughs> that, that You know what? That's a good point. If women were as uh, sexually aggressive as men, STDs would be such a even bigger problem. For sure. Yeah, like, For sure. can you imagine how much worse the AIDS epidemic would have been if if women oh. were as horny as men? Yeah, like, think about it. You can't even tell somebody has it for years sometimes, like, right. if they don't get tested. It would, it would, it would be a, it would be wiping people out, man. Like, it would be <laughs> really bad. <laughs> it's actually probably one of the reasons it was so much, like, worse, like, in the gay community. Yeah, because they're all dudes. Like, right, they're all right. Just, yeah. <laughs> they're just throwing Men it not around. Be trusted. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. will destroy society. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, well, AJ, I think that'll do it for the show today. A real hodgepodge of uh, topics today, but uh, that's the way yeah. the show goes sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we hope everybody enjoyed following along. If you will, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, you can also subscribe in audio form on your podcast catcher of choice. Leave us thumbs up, positive reviews, all that good stuff. Uh, if you like, you can follow me over on Twitter slash X at Zach Jones Live. That's Z A C H J O N E S L I V E. But that'll do it for all of our shenanigans and poppycock this week. Please, please, please tune in again next week. Bye, guys. Take care.